We're back over here at the town today because we have some big things to do. It was fun working on the wood project over there, but we got to get back to working on the town here. And if you didn't see in the last episode, I did say that I was going to be doing a live stream for, for per my time. This will be happening tomorrow for up to 12 hours straight. I'm going to be doing a lot of work over here in the town on roads and walls. So what better way to spend this episode than designing roads and walls and going over some tips and tricks or ways that you can design a good looking road and good looking walls. So let's get to designing and get this thing done. So down comes the fence. We've had this here protecting our villagers for a while now, but I mean, they're already blocked in. So even if mobs get up there, unless it's like a raid, nothing's gonna be able to get to them anyway. So let's tear this down. Let's take a good look at the pathing that we already have and decide if this is what we're gonna actually stick with going forward, or if we wanna update to a different design. And then we'll talk about actually creating the path, what goes into making decisions on what to do, where to do them, how much to do, and all sorts of different things when it comes to pathing. I'd like to apologize in advance for audio clipping that you're going to hear during most of this video. Windows changed my settings again and they turned my microphone from 75% to 100% without me knowing it. Therefore, all of the audio was a lot louder than normal and it made the quality very bad, unfortunately. I tried to tune it down a little bit, but I did, I did the best that I could. Thank you so much for understanding. I appreciate you all and enjoy. Oh, and also one more thing, stick around to the end of the video because I got some crazy surprises for you coming up. So first things first, when you're designing a path, you kind of want to have an idea of what type of materials you want to use. Now for ours out there, I've stuck a lot with the stones, so I am going to grab those, but we can also experiment a little bit with some other things too. What you want to do is ultimately pick something where you can have a variety of different items that are very similar in color. That way you can texture things and, and make things look a little bit different, right? So it may be different types of stone, different types of dirt, like coarse dirt, regular dirt, um, using your shovel to make pathing blocks, things like that. Um, or maybe you do something like the deep slate and you mix in some black stone and some cobblestone, things like that. There is definitely a lot of different options to choose from when it comes to making a path. Um, you can also do this with woods. And I think what I want to do is not only get the different stone types, but I also want to check out some of the wood types too, which I don't have. Good thing, well, I, I don't have oak. We're gonna have to do a little bit of tree farming, but this will allow me to maybe differentiate a little bit, right? Because maybe in some areas of the town, I'll have the stone pathing. Maybe some areas of the town, I will have wood pathing if it makes sense. So I'm gonna get some of both of these out and together. Maybe I'll even throw in some jungle wood. I don't know if it'll mix in or not, but we'll grab a little bit of that too. I'm gonna go ahead and make a couple project boxes. No, they're not going anywhere close to gas and I gotta go chop up some oak. Good thing I have a farm for that, like I said. So I'm gonna get that together and then let's work on texturing a path. So we're over here at our barren field of copper and I thought it would be good to come over here and do a little practicing layout, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our stone blocks here first, cause we're gonna practice with those first. And the thing I like to do is I like to decide which block that I'm using is actually going to be my primary block. Instead of, I know some people will like to go through and just lay down their pattern as they go. And at least for me, my brain just doesn't work that way. So for me, it's easier to lay out a base like block first. It's going to be like the block that there's going to be the most of. And then I'm going to go through and detail things from there. Before we do that, we need to know how wide our path is going to be. And I think for the most part through there, our, our path is about five, but it bleeds into seven blocks wide. So what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna make a pathway that's five blocks wide. You can use this for any size path, whether it be three blocks, five blocks, seven blocks, you know, whatever. Whatever you need is fine. And we don't need to do a ton. We're just gonna do a little bit of a stretch like this. I think will be more than enough. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay down my base block. There we go. We got a base block in. Now what I'm gonna do is depending on how much or how little of this base block I want, I'm gonna start knocking out a lot of blocks to do detailing. 
and I think I want to be pretty heavily detailed there so we're gonna knock out a decent amount of the blocks and I like to do them in patches although if you have a different way that you may like to do it that's fine do it that way too uh, but we're gonna get some where there's some single blocks that are out but mostly speaking we're gonna do little streaks and patches and things like that so we're just gonna kind of break all of these in and now that we have our patchiness here we can start to take some of these other blocks and fill it in now I'm using solid blocks here because I'm gonna rip these up but you can use slabs to save yourself some space also if you're playing on in bedrock edition you can put lights under the slabs to make the area spawn proof we will definitely be doing that in the town just to get us a little bit more lighting um, and make sure that we have less of a mob problem over there so from here really I just like to mix in blocks and not put the same type of detail blocks close to each other right so I may do a little bit of this and then the ones that maybe have a texture that maybe more matches with the base block I may put more of so I'm like sticking more flat stones you may see me use these stone bricks a little bit in spots but they see they feel so structured I don't want to overdo it right so let's go let's put some gravel here and here let's mix in a little bit more andesite let's mix in a little bit more stone let's put in another stone brick here and let's put a piece of andesite right here so there now our texture is there we have something that's a little bit more interesting to look at but it's not good enough yet we now need to add in some height variation so let me get some more blocks and now on my hot bar I have a lot of detail blocks so what we can start to do is start to poke out little holes here and there where we've maybe already put stuff and then replace a detail block to give us some depth in those areas so I took out a piece of stone I put in a piece of stone I may come over here where I have a cobble and maybe I'll actually put a slab down there just to give us a dip down I have some buttons too, some stone buttons so they're gonna blend in really good if I put them on stone or andesite so I may mix those into a few different areas as well and I'm just gonna go through and depending on how broken I want the path to look I'm gonna start mixing these in in different locations making sure not to overdo it because it is definitely possible to overdo it so I'm gonna do a couple more locations here and we'll see how it looks and there we go now we have a little bit of variation in the texture I can maybe even you know as you step back and look if you have an area that looks too plain feel free to do whatever it is you feel like you need to do to mix things up maybe I'll put this right here and it started to look better but now it's still it's not flat looking here but it's flat looking out here so another trick that you can do is blend in with the terrain right so what we might do is we might take out a little strip here knock out one here a little strip over here and so on and then this way we can now start to mix in some blocks out this way that will kind of fill in this area a little bit more okay looking a little bit better same deal maybe I'll do a little bit of detailing here where I go through and just kind of mix out some of the blocks a little bit maybe we got gravel there what about we continue some gravel through this way and then we just kind of mix things up a little bit just to make them interesting again very good now one other thing depending on what you have around the outside of this you want to probably blend that in a little bit too for me since it's a walkway and I, it's gonna it's gonna be walk it's, it's gonna be walked on right um, I think it looks walked on if you have some pathing blocks and some dirt block dirt blocks around so what I might do is I might go through and kind of heavily on the outer edges mix in some path blocks that makes it look like you know maybe some people were walking off to the side of the path and the grass has kind of died right on top of that though I may actually break in in some locations to make the path blocks actually come further into here very seldomly just do I have any where's my dirt blocks just breaking in slightly enough to where I don't over, ruin the overall feel of my path but also it, it does make it show a little bit of wear and tear which I think is good so that looks pretty good maybe we mix in like one more right here now look at that from a like from this from the side angles perspective it looks very blended we could even maybe go a little bit heavier with the pathing blocks and kind of take them out a little bit further in some areas just to give it additional depth 
but look at that that looks really good we've already blended this thing in it looks great now i didn't do this in this example but you could even go further with it and have little like hills that kind of go up slightly and down slightly so kind of keep that in mind too work with your natural terrain and have subtle changes in height to where maybe you go up some with some slabs first over the span of a few blocks before you then go up to like that full block height right take things up gradually because that's probably how pathing would kind of work and it'll feel more natural when you do that i'm going to do the same thing with wood it's the same process i'll show you the end result and here is your wood version of this now i went a little extreme here but I wanted to give a few different examples, okay? So a lot of the same things apply. First, you gotta figure out what's your base color gonna be. And you can go, I realistically to me, in two different directions. Like oak and, and spruce make the two better versions of a primary color for the walkway. With oak, you can either go to a brighter color like birch and make it kind of look like it's sun dried a little bit, or you can go a darker color and make it look like it's wet and been waterlogged. Um, you can also go with spruce and then go with a lighter color to oak for that sun dried look or a darker color to dark oak for that wet look. And I didn't do this over here, but you can also with the stairs, you can waterlog them and maybe even put like a puddle close by, right? And then that'll make it look like the, I don't know, you have water, standing water sitting in there. It just kind of adds a new level of interest and depth. We put in buttons. I forgot about trap doors or uh, pressure plates over here because you can do stone pressure plates. So I put some here too. Just little ways that you can add in a little bit of interest. Obviously spruce trap doors are like some of the best things to use. So if you go with spruce or oak, you can kind of easily fit these guys in. They look awesome for detailing block too. So we have two different ones and I do think I'm going this route mainly for the town, but you never know. I might go in a couple places with something like this. I'll have to see if there's anywhere that I think that it fits. But first, we need to take a look at how to design walls. This one can be a little bit more difficult, but also a lot more fun. So the first thing that you should be doing when planning a wall is you kind of need to know where it's going to go. And we planned that out way earlier in the season. Check out my planning episode to see that. But we have a wall that is cut through the front of the village right here on the other side of this is, of this is going to be some houses and it kind of cuts all the way across and it actually hits some natural barriers which is a, a really cool way to do the wall too where you can actually have it blend into some natural barriers like water or mountain size we have a little bit of wall over here as well and one of the things that you kind of need to know too is how wide or big is your wall going to be are you going with something really small just more of like almost kind of like a, a small upgrade from a fence to keep mobs out are you going with something really big and structured to protect a town from mass invasion or are you landing somewhere in the middle and for us we're definitely landing somewhere in the middle i don't want something too small because this is this is going to be a decent sized village with or a decent sized town with pretty decent sized houses i think i don't need to go too big either because this this town's not going to have some huge military or anything of that nature so what i'm thinking is we'll probably do about three blocks wide on the wall deep enough wide enough to add in a little bit of depth and detail and then i don't quite know how tall yet we're probably going to pay, play around with that part uh, i don't think we're going to have it to where it has a walkway on the top maybe it'll have some ladders and stands at certain points instead i'm not really too sure and then when it comes to block palette I know I want to use deep slate in some way and I know I want to use wood in some way wood pillars or beams as supports maybe and then deep slate and then who knows what else is going to go into this wall and then that's about as far in my thinking as I've gotten it's a curved wall so going with something that's going to be a pattern for me is not going to be easy because patterns are not too bad to repeat there's a zombie under here <laughs> sorry um patterns are easy to repeat when you're talking about a straight line when you're talking about a curved type wall like this it's not easy at all to repeat so i think where we're going to start is we're going to figure out what our base block is going to be the one that is going to be the predominant portion of the wall 
and start to fill that in a little bit first and then we'll start to pull blocks out to detail we'll look at how often we want to have the wood pillars around it and we'll, we'll start to get a little bit better sense of this once we at least have an outline so i'm gonna do that first build it up here on top of my my building and we got we got a wall base in and i kept it roughly three blocks wide all the way around it or all the way down it's kind of hard to do it exactly because of corners and tight weird turns and stuff but it's at least three blocks wide everywhere which should allow us to continually get our depth now i think the next thing that i'd like to do is start to figure out the height and i think i'm going to figure out the height starting at the lower area like down in here and we're going to do it via a wireframe so what i want to do is kind of go through like this i think i want to work in odd numbers so one two three i know i want to go taller than three so maybe let's go four five and then one two three four five and then what we can do is we can kind of wireframe things out every so often we'll add in one of these little pillars like maybe i'll put a another one right here and then here and then i'll connect it together and then just to keep things looking right and keeping the wall straight i'll knock out any extra blocks that i don't like that don't match up exactly to the bottom for now we could always revisit those later but now i think that's what i want to do like it's already given me a good sense of the size and i do kind of like that it doesn't feel too imposing maybe there's even some spots that are lower or higher strategically for different reasons we'll see this will be a big main gate too so i might even widen this out a little bit but I think you get the idea. I'm gonna do this wireframe all the way down now. And now that the wall's up, I think it's time to frame things out a little bit. So I think what I wanna do here is I wanna bring some spruce pillars up like this. Spruce is a good look for this because it's a really rough looking wood and it just feels like something that would be used in a wall, right? And I think I would like to have it diagonally set out from the edge of the wall. So what I might actually do is move all of this in by one. So start, let the wall start like right here maybe. So we can connect that up, connect that up, and then we'll just wireframe that off too. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And even though I'm, I'm mostly just gonna work on the front face right now, I think we're just gonna, we'll just put this up on both sides just for, ow. What just, what just hit me? This like ghost damage that can happen in Bedrock Edition is very annoying. In any event, yeah, that feels good. We'll figure out like gating or something there at some point in the near future. For now though, we, we got this as our like base for the wall. Andesite is what I chose to go with. Doesn't mean it's all gonna stay andesite though. We're gonna, we're gonna play around with some things. First, I gotta figure out how often do I want these pillars to be? Cause that's gonna help me figure out how I'm gonna fill in the middle of the wall. So what if we always count over a certain number of blocks and then do it regardless of where that block lands. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we could maybe do seven and put one right here, eight, nine, or we could do nine and put one right there maybe. Let me kind of back up here and get a feel for it. Seven might feel a little bit too frequent. So let's go with the nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, we'll go with the nine. And then let's go ahead, two, three, four, five. And then let's do the same thing over here. Okay, we got the nine and nine. That feels pretty good. I do like the way that that looks and feels. Now, let's go ahead for now, I think. And let's actually just fill in the wall so we can get a sense of how big is the wall? In what ways can we fill it in? What are the surfaces going to look like? I think getting a visual of it is going to work good. Visuals work really good for me just to be able to really see things. Some people can see things in their head. And if you could do that, I envy you. I really do because I, I really wish I could do that. But for me, seeing is believing. So let's fill it in. So now that we have this part done, I'm going to work from the inside of the wall just because it's a little bit easier to see from in here than it is on the other side because we have all the stuff built over there that's kind of in the way. So I don't know yet what I want to do to build in depth. You remember me saying in the last episode, put walls in walls. So I don't know if that's gonna work here or not, but let's try it. I think, don't I have some of these walls left over somewhere? Let me see if I can find those first. So I've brought the walls over here and we, we put walls in walls and it gives us a cool depth. I don't hate that, but I don't know if that's gonna be the route to go. 
especially when we start shifting up and down some but at the same time it's gonna be hard to get that depth let's try some let's keep that over here just to look at let me try something different over here so i do like this but it feels a little chunky right so if we go with something like this whether we keep it the the dark the deep slate or not what if we do something like adding in some stairs what is that gonna do i don't know if i like that yet or not what if we just did slabs at this level don't think i like that either what if this level here was stairs instead let's try replacing these and see what this does hmm i don't mind that how would we connect this like that maybe i don't know place the ends there maybe i think the top here is throwing me off now let's take this idea a little bit further again experiment I, I'm, I'm not sold on this, but I don't dislike it either. But what I'm going to do, I know I don't like this. So we're going to keep this over here for now. We're going to move over here and we're going to try something. I don't know, maybe radically different. I got I want to play around a little bit and see what's going to make sense. I've played with things a little bit and it's really hard for me to find something that I like. I can't really find something that I'm in love with yet. And I think that's fine. Um, I may need to just kind of step back a little bit, maybe even, I don't know, check out some screenshots of walls that other people have made. It's just, it, it's good, but it's missing something. It needs some other detailing that I'm not really thinking about right now to, I think, complete it and make it look as good as it can. Also, if I can't find anything tonight, I can always rely on stream tomorrow. Remember, I am streaming tomorrow, real lifetime, not, not YouTube video time. Um, so maybe people in stream can help me out a little bit in figuring out what this thing is missing It might need something over the top. It might need some extra bit of detailing in the middle somewhere I'm not really quite sure what that is It may just be be that the pillars need to be more frequent and instead of every nine maybe they need to be every seven or every five or something like that probably every seven would bring it in a lot closer and make it look a little bit better so i'm not sure what the answer is but i'm going to start getting all my stream stuff ready for tomorrow so I, I have time and i'm prepared and then i will see you guys on the other side of a really large cut because by the time i get back on here again my up to 12 hour stream day will have happened and this place might look a lot different i'll start with the pathing and then we'll see how much of the wall we get done too so something really crazy has happened. It happened in the stream today, and I, I, I need to I need to show you guys. The stream made me shave my beard. It is gone. But how's everybody doing today? Like I almost can't like react to stand there goes Schmitty. And there goes Schmitty. All right, I think my face feels cold already. It's already so cold. Here it is, guys. You made it happen. You did it. My beard's gone. It's gone. Can you see why I had the beard in the first place? I'm not very flattering looking without a beard. I'm really not. So we definitely need to grow this thing back. But the subathon has concluded and... It, everybody was so awesome. Thank you to anybody that showed up. I don't want to give special thanks to anybody in particular because I, a I would probably forget people, and b just because some people could could give donations and some can't. I don't want those that can't give donations to feel left out. So if you just showed up during the stream, thank all of you. I really I really do thank you. Thank you so much. Um, on top of shaving our face, we had to do something else too. I got this. It's an infinity bow. Do you see this? This bow has infinity on it. I have to use it for two weeks, two whole weeks with this terrible bow. And I'm looking for a good name for it. So if any of you guys have a good name for an awful infinity bow, the worst kind of bow that you could possibly get in Minecraft, then drop it down in the comment section below because I will pick one of them as the name for this bow. But not only did we shave our face on stream, but we completed all the pathing here. I think I technically forgot some outside of the like border. Um, we'll take a look at that in a little bit, but I took those techniques that I showed you guys earlier and I applied them out here. We got some pressure plates in. I even went a little bit further. We have like some moss on the outside and then we put mossy cobble right around that, kind of like the moss is spreading into the cobblestone. 
um and it looks really really good not only do we have the primary roads we have the secondary roads in as well and they look so good this turned out really great it took the whole 12 hours of stream to get all this stuff done we did some other fun stuff in stream too that took away from the time of doing this but it looks so good and if we like get can i can i fly can i fly if we get up top here and just look at this place it looks so much better now that we have the actual roadways in it's really starting to look like a town i'm super happy with it um not only that we have a wall so for the most part i stuck with a lot of the design that we were working on with the wall earlier but it was just missing something right so i worked with stream on it a little bit and we came up with this total design you know we added in some cross beams and i can't remember if i had the stair portion before or not i think i did um i got the trap doors on here we have an overall decoration that really looks like awesome it looks so good uh, we added in some detailing to the blocks here just to kind of break it up a little bit we did the same up top too i didn't want to do it too much so we didn't do it to the andesite although we definitely could have um, i probably still got a little bit of terraforming to do here and i have a small section of wall i still need to do but if i want to get this episode out anytime soon for you guys I i'm going to have to abandon this for now and do that after the episode is over so i'm going to work on that just so i can get you guys this episode by saturday but not only does it look good in normal Minecraft, that I, hey, hello, um, but it looks awesome in RTX mode as well. Let's wait for nighttime to come, and then me and the cow here are going to take a look at it. Yes, this place looks so awesome in RTX mode. I really hope you guys think it does too. We're gonna have to do a lot more moody lighting like this as we go through and work on the rest of the town. I have not done any in the pathway yet because I thought it would be better to do that when we actually start getting houses and other shops up. We'll more work on lighting those up so they light the street as opposed to the street itself being lit. But I am so happy with how this area turned out. It is so exciting. It is so great. Oh, and in case you forgot, derpy face. <laughs> So I would love to thank all of you so very much for watching this episode. I hope you liked it. If so, drop me a comment down in the comment section below and let me know what you liked about this episode. It's it's my face, isn't it? Let's just let's just be serious. You love the face. I just look so cute. <laughs> But in any event, if you did enjoy the episode, click the subscribe button. It helps out ever so much. Click the like button. Drop me some comments down below. Those things all help the video get discovered. Also, share the Bedrock Guide with a friend. Have somebody else, a friend, a family member, a child, a parent, somebody that plays Minecraft. They should probably watch the Bedrock Guide too. Make sure you share it with them. And I appreciate you guys so much. I'll see you next time. Bye.